the key idea for how we're going to prove things about the Lorentz system is going to be a certain type of reduction to a discrete time dynamical system. Pay attention to this one, it is so important. What have we done? We've started off with the full Lorentz system in 3D, coming from those differential equations, which themselves are a reduction of a very complex PDE. But then we took that and we reduced it down to the geometric Lorentz attractor as a way of sort of compressing out all of the difficulties of the full 3D continuous time system, moving down to a two-dimensional, or kind of two-dimensional, continuous time system on that branched surface. Now our next step is going to be reducing this to a one-dimensional discrete time dynamical system. This is going to be through a mechanism known as a Poincaré map. That's right, you've heard of that guy before. Poincaré. <laughs> What's involved with this? Let's see. So we got our geometric Lorentz attractor, which is a branched surface. It looks like this guy. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on that branch line. That line that cuts across where these two branches fuse together. And the key step is going to be to topologize that branch line as an interval. The interval from 0 to 1. So 0 is going to be what we call the point on the left hand end or the left side of the branch line. And then the right side of this branch line, that point right at the boundary, we're going to call that 1. Now, every other point in between, let's say, I don't know, one half, is given a corresponding number. We're topologizing all the points on this branch line so that they have numerical values. Now, why are we doing that? We're doing this in order to get a Poincaré return map, a one-dimensional discrete time dynamical system defined on this branch line. So given our geometric Lorentz attractor, focusing on that branch line, pick a point on that branch line. Let's call it x. For any x that is in this interval from 0 to 1, we're going to define p of x, the Poincaré map evaluated at x, to be the point of first return under the flow on this geometric Lorentz attractor. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is you take that point x, and then you follow along the flow line that passes through x. It has a unique forward orbit, and it runs around, I don't know, either to the left or to the right, depending on the value of x, and it eventually hits that branch line again at some other point. That point of first return to the branch line, we're going to call that p of x. It's going to have some numerical value. It's going to be a point on that interval from 0 to 1. Now, here's the thing. Once you do that, you can keep going. And you can look at the continuation of that flow line until you hit the branch line again. And guess what that is? That is p of p of x, or if you like, p squared of x. We're iterating that discrete time dynamical system forward. And you can keep going and going and talk about the dynamics of the flow on the geometric Lorentz attractor in terms of orbits of the Poincaré map. Now, everything's great except for that one point that falls into the saddle equilibrium at the origin. That's kind of bad because it never really goes around and hits the branch line again. We're going to say that that point corresponds to the numerical value of one half on the branch line for reasons that you'll see. Okay, but before we explain that, what is this Poincaré map, P, from the interval to itself? This is really a deep idea. In this case, I mean explicitly, what is this map? Does it have a formula? Well, let's think. If we look at the left-hand side of this branch line, the point that corresponds to zero, what happens if I flow forward? Well, it's on that boundary loop, and I come right back to where I start. P of zero equals zero. Ah, 
It's an equilibrium. Very interesting. In like manner, P of 1 equals 1, the right-hand endpoint is on that boundary loop. What about P of 1 half? We've already said that that is a fail. It's, it's undecided. Now, technically, we could kind of say that it's equal to 0 or 1 by following the unstable manifold coming out of that saddle equilibrium at the origin. That's a little weird, but it kind of makes sense. Keep that in mind as we keep going. Now, to get at what P does on values not equal to 0 or 1 or 1 half, consider first the interval from 0 to 1 half on the left-hand side. Think about all the points in there. What happens as you flow that entire interval moving forward in time? Well, everything on that half goes around to the left and it comes over. But on the left-hand side, 0 is sent to 0. On the right-hand side, the limit as you come to 1 half from the left gets sent to 1 coming in from the left. You see how it goes around like that? Yeah, okay. So it takes the entire interval from 0 to 1 half and stretches it out to the interval from 0 to 1. That's the action of this map on the left-hand interval. For the right-hand interval, the same thing is happening. We're taking the interval that goes from 1 half to 1, and we flow it forwards. It moves around to the right. It gets stretched out, and it covers the entire interval from 0 to 1. Now, what function does this? The simplest function that matches this behavior, 0 to 0, 1 to 1, stretches the left and the right half intervals over to the entire thing. This function is p of x equals 2 times x mod 1. Think about that. Folks, this is a big idea, and it's going to take a little time to sink in. You're going to want to contemplate this. The Poincaré map p going from the interval to the interval tells us everything about the dynamics on our geometric Lorenz attractor. If we examine the equilibria, we have two of them, and that corresponds to those two obvious periodic orbits, the boundary at 0 and the other boundary at 1. But what about other orbits of this Poincaré map? What about periodic orbits? Those, if they exist, are going to correspond to more complex periodic orbits on the geometric Lorentz system. That's a thing that we're going to want to focus on. And our question moving forward is, what are the dynamical features of the map P of x equals 2x mod 1? We're going to be thinking about this in the context of the geometric Lorentz attractor, but look, we've reduced it down to just a one-dimensional discrete time dynamical system that we can examine on its own. We can look at the diagram associated to this. What will we see? What we're going to see is that this is most definitely a chaotic dynamical system. There's all kinds of crazy stuff going on there, but because we have used this Poincaré map reduction, we are going to be able to prove things about the chaotic dynamics on the geometric Lorentz attractor by proving things about the dynamics of the Poincaré map.